Well, I think I've always been interested in culture, not so much from a visual point of view. I, I did do photography since I was little, but I always said I wasn't going to be a photographer because I thought I needed to be something more serious or have a job. Um, but I started more from the point of view of looking at culture and when I was in college I spent a year studying visual anthropology and traveling around the world doing that and I started my career at National Geographic and my first project was about the Maya Indians in Chiapas and as I was struggling with understanding their culture speaking the language the, I had to work through the women as a woman and they only spoke the Maya language and I felt like once I was able to make a picture I was only able to describe what I saw in the most superficial way, the kind of document surface of it. And I wasn't able to go deeper and really say something about what I was seeing or bring a kind of deep understanding to it. And I started thinking about the kind of crazy world of LA that I had grown up in and things I had seen in high school and thinking that maybe that culture which in a strange way does impact people all over the world through Hollywood and the media, that maybe that was worthy of the same kind of, kind of rigorous study that anthropologists and photographers give to foreign cultures. And so that's how I began looking at LA in the 90s. Hi, Erin. Hi. Okay, so I'm gonna just give you some actions to do. I just do the first thing that comes to mind. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Oh, my hair. Oh my God. So I made this spot called Like a Girl that had this unexpected popularity. We started it as a kind of small spot and it ended up being seen by over 215 million people and getting 12 billion impressions around the world. Um, in a way, I saw the possibility for activism in that work because I've always got into the work as a documentarian, not to change the world. I feel like people see the work and then maybe they want to go change the world, but it's not my job to be pres prescriptive about what that changes. My name is Dakota and I'm 10 years old. Show me what it looks like to run like a girl. Throw like a girl. Fight like a girl. What does it mean to you when I say run like a girl? It means run fast as you can. With like a girl, there was something about the realization that people had in the spa and it was a social experiment where girls and, and women and even some boys talked about what the words like a girl meant, what it meant to run like a girl, to throw like a girl. And what we learned was that it was an insult, that it meant something bad, that being like a girl was, was an insult that was kind of denigrating half of the world. And we saw that this happened through society, that the young girls didn't know what this was, but at a certain age around puberty, the girls start to understand that being a girl means something bad. I think it definitely drops their self-confidence and um, really puts them down because during that time they're already trying to figure themselves out and when somebody says you hit like a girl it's like well what does that mean because they think they're a strong person it's kind of like telling them that they're weak and they're not as good as them. And what advice do you have to young girls who are told they run like a girl, kick like a girl, hit like a girl, swing like a girl? Keep doing it because it's working. If somebody else says that running like a girl or kicking like a girl or shooting like a girl is something that you shouldn't be doing, that's their problem. Because if you're still scoring and you're still getting to the ball on time and you're still being first, if you're doing it right. It doesn't matter what they say. I mean. Yes, I kick like a girl, and I swim like a girl, and I walk like a girl, and I wake up in the morning like a girl, because I am a girl. And that's not something that I should be ashamed of. There was something so powerful in seeing that realization, that the women and the people in the spot have the realization, and I think it allows the audience to have the same realization, that something that they thought was just a throwaway insult was actually disempowering to half the planet. And 
the effect of people sharing that spot was that the words actually changed. That we learned, first of all, that words matter, and that second of all, that people could change them. And so it kind of started this whole movement where people were like, let's be an astronaut like a girl, let's be a director like a girl. And it created this whole kind of movement of empowerment, which was really unexpected for me, but was also really inspiring. And I think that, you know, we, we do this work as documentarians, but there's always a little bit of a desire to be a change maker too, or to contribute to making the world a better place as we see all these problems around us. And so that spot was kind of a high point for me. If I asked you to, to run like a girl now, would you do it differently? I would run like myself. Would you like a chance to redo it? Yeah. I'm not gonna say that um, we can really get ourselves out of where we're in. I think it is, you know, it's like when I filmed Thin about eating disorders, most people relapse. And it was actually really hard for the eating disorder community to um, see my film because, or some people in the eating disorder community see my film because relapse is so strong. And there's that tension, do we give people hope or do we show the reality that it's a really hard road? And in this work, I've decided to show the reality that it's a really hard word, wor road. But I hope, and in the film I particularly worked on this, to also give a sense of where the hope can come from. And I think it can come from realization and waking up and understanding what's important to us, but also to a society. And I, and I do believe in that. I believe that we can see that and make change. But like addiction, it might take hitting rock bottom first. And I think in this world that we see in Generation Wealth, we see our kind of race to the bottom, but we also see the possibility of agency. Mm -hmm.